Amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for praise for raising his son from the dead. Amen. Aren't you glad he got up? I know I'm glad he got up. Amen. He got up so I can, so I could get up. Amen. Amen. Good morning to you who are here and good morning to our Facebook Live audience. Amen. It is a great day to celebrate the Lord's resurrection. Amen. I'm going to ask the music ministry to come with one selection, and then Minister Anthony McCoy is going to come with a prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, celebrate a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I thank you, Lord, for rising. Thank you, God, for your resurrection power. Because he lives, we can live. Amen. Because he lives, we can live. This song just says, Lord, we lift your name on high. Come on and stand up and clap your hands with us in this place. Come on, clap your hands. Ooh. Come on here, Lord, I lift your name real big, guys. Go. Lord, I lift your name on high. To sing. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save sing again, us. Sing again, Lord, I live. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're. I'm so glad you're in my Lord, life. Let's sing it from the beginning. Come on, sing. Lord, I live. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Come on, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you Here we came go, here we go, real big. Us. You came, you. You came from heaven to earth to show. Say higher, higher. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, we come this morning, Lord, to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us all to lie down in the image of death on last night. And Lord, you woke us this morning and we say good morning to you, Jesus. We love you. We're here to worship you. We thank you for our leader, our pastor, Dr. Billy Bell, and his wife and his family. We pray and ask, Lord, that you continue to shine down on them and cover them and keep them. Lord, continue to let them look forward, look ahead to run this race with endurance, Lord, with the joy of the Lord in their heart. Lord, continues to impute the word of God in our pastor that he continues to show his love throughout this nation to all of us. We thank you for him, Lord. We thank you for them, Lord. We thank you for this place called New Pilgrim Rest. We thank you for our assistant pastor with his leadership. We thank you, Lord, as a young man, Lord, continues to grow him up in you, Lord, that he speak what you would have him to do and say, Lord, that we'll listen as members of this church. Lord, then we just say thank you, Lord, for raising up on this Sunday, Lord, going back to heaven and making a place for all of us. Lord, we're here to worship you today, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would just send your word today. Lord, let it cover everyone sitting in here. Lord, don't let no one leave untouched by your uncompromised gospel. Lord, we're here to hear what you have to say. This is your day, for every day is the Lord. We thank you right now, Lord. We love you. We bless you. Lord, we know that there's sickness in the body of Christ, there's sickness in there, and, and, and right here in this house, and we pray and ask you right now for your healing. Lord, we know you are God that heal it. We know you are God that knows all, see all. And so, Lord, we, can, we, we surrender ourselves right now. We surrender. We open to the Spirit of God. Say what you need to say. Speak to us, Lord. We're your children, Lord, and we want to live better. We want to do better. Lord, we sometimes come short of your glory, but I ask you right now to forgive us even right now. Lord, we thank you today, Lord. We pray for every pastor, preacher, leader across this globe, Lord. Every missionary, everyone that's out on the battlefield. Lord, I ask that you undergird them right now, that someone would come running, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we love you today. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Good morning, and welcome to this Sunday's edition of Pilgrim Land News. Pastor is asking all of the men to join him on Monday night for the Momentum Men Ministry. It starts here at the church at 6.30 on Mondays, so please come out for fun and fellowship in the Lord. The Women's Ministry is inviting all of the ladies to join them on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. for the Ladies Bible Study. You can come here to the church in the fellowship hall or you can join on Zoom. So please come out on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. for a great time in the Word. Pastor is asking all members to meet him on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for Life Night. You can join him here on campus or on Zoom. We hope to see everyone there for Life Night Bible Study. All anniversary committee members are asked to meet Monday, April 18th at 7.45 p.m. This meeting will be held on Zoom using Pastor's login. Join us Sunday, April 24th, right here in Pilgrimland at 9 a.m. Our guest preacher will be Dr. S.C. Dixon, the senior pastor of Greater Mount Olive Baptist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm through Mount Olive. I've said all of that to say this to you. You will come out of your cave. It may not be today and it may not be tomorrow. It may not even be next week, next month, or next year. But God will get you out of your cave when he gets ready and when you come out you ought to lift up your hands and open your mouth and tell God thank you again we are asking all members to please be present and join us 
Sunday, April the 24th at 9 a.m. We are gearing up for our pastor and wife's 25th anniversary here at the New Pilgrim Rest Church. Yes, I said it, 25th anniversary. And in this wonderful effort to honor our pastor and wife, we are asking all members, regardless of age, to please help us in participating in our effort for their anniversary. We're asking all to give $10, yes, just $10 a week for the next 25 Sundays in our effort to support our pastor and wife for this honored occasion. 25 years represents silver, so we want to make sure that we bless our pastor with double honor. So we're asking all to please help us, join us, and even overflow and beat us with this effort. Thank you for viewing this Sunday's edition of Pilgrim Land News. We hope you have been greatly blessed by these announcements. Please come back and see us next week. Amen. How many of you know that Jesus is still yet alive? Amen. I know when some people think of today, they think of bunny rabbits and Easter. But I believe that it's Resurrection Day and Jesus, he got up. Hallelujah. He's alive in me. And I thank him for the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Why do you cry? He has risen. Why are you weeping? He's not dead. Why do Why are you weeping? He's not dead. He paid it all on that lonely highway, and he's a
Amen. Yeah, thank y'all. He's not dead. He is not dead. There is an empty tomb to prove that he got up. Amen. He got up on the third day, third day morning. Amen. And because he got up, we can we can get up. We, whatever you're going through, you, you, can, you can overcome it just because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I, I hear John the Revelation, I, I am he who once was dead, but is alive for evermore. My, my. Well, happy Easter Resurrection Sunday to all of you, uh, to both churches, the one that's on site and the one that's virtual. Thank and praise God for both of you on this morning. Let me say good morning to New Pilgrim Rest. And to our listening audience, we give praise and honor to God for another day that we have uh, longed to see. And we thank God already for what he's doing in and through us on this day. It's just good to be here on another Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Many that laid down last night didn't get up this morning. Uh, many who started off the week with us did not finish the week. Amen. Alive and on top of the dirt. The dirt is on top of them. So it's just good to be uh, here in the house of God on today. There's a word. I don't want to hold you long. I know you probably have planned Easter dinners and so forth. Uh, let me just rush hurriedly 
uh, to the 40th book of the Bible, the gospel recorded by Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 7. It reads thusly, in the end of the Sabbath, as began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, ye for I know that you are seeking Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. <laughs> Ooh, boy, this is almost a sermon. I just got a few scattered remarks, and I'll let you go. Listen, I just want to talk briefly from this thought on this morning. Distinct directions for desired destiny. Distinct direction for desired destiny. Distinct. They're clear. Unambiguous. They're clear. Alfred Hitchcock, that eerie and weird show in the early 60s. There was one particular show that he did in 1964. It was remade in 1987. It depicted a woman, a murderous woman, who was captured and put in prison. She was so vile and corrupt that she made a vow that somehow, some way, she would figure a way how to get out and escape prison. In fact, she told the warden, this prison can't hold me. From day one, she surveyed the prison and she looked for ways to escape. F finally, she, she noticed the grave digger. He was old, walked real slow, had cataracts on his eyes. She watched him and noticed that when the toll bell would ring, he would always take an inmate who had died and take them, put them on the court, and wheel them outside the gates of the prison. She said, I got a plan. She goes to the grave digger. She notices that he needs money to have surgery for his cataracts. So she devised a plan that, that really dealt with when someone die, instead of you going down there to wheel them out, I'm going to go down in the mall, climb into the coffin. Plan was, you come down and wheel me out, take me on the outside of the prison, lower me in a shallow grave, wait a few minutes, and come back and let me out. Well, finally, the toll bell did ring. That meant someone, another prisoner, had died. 
she rushed down to the morgue and climbed in to the coffin. Finally, the wheels of the cart started rolling. She could almost hear freedom bells ringing. Rolled the cart to the outside of the gate, lowered it in the ground. She could almost see herself walking out of the prison. She heard the thud of the dirt hitting the coffin. And it hit the coffin. And finally, she waited. Minutes turned to hours. The hours got longer. The grave digger was supposed to let her lay in that shallow grave just a few minutes. Then she panicked. She struck a match, and the match revealed that she was in the coffin with the grave digger. She had foolishly placed her hope in someone who couldn't deliver her past the grave. She had placed her hope and someone who couldn't even save himself. She, she had placed her hope in someone who would eventually let her down. And I might be talking to somebody here today who been placing your hope in someone who can even help themselves. No wonder the songwriter said, my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus love and his righteousness today is not a fairy tale it is the resurrection he did get up and if we just place our hope in him I trust in him. Whatever you're going through, he can and will deliver you. The resurrection is for all of us. We have minimized it so much so that it's just another day. It's just another Sunday that we go to church used to be in times past that you you couldn't hardly get in church on resurrection sunday but my how we have placed our hope in other places and other people that the resurrection just doesn't mean that much to some of us as it did in times past I want to I want to just peep in on on this passage today. I, I, I want to peruse the pericope of this passage and look at how the angels gave instructions to the women. Watch the text. The text says, "In the end of the Sabbath, the women first of all they came." early that Sunday morning. They came early that Sunday morning. They came early because of their devotion. They, they were devoted to Christ. They, they, they came early because they were, they were not only devoted but they were dedicated. Th these women that came, they had watched him die on that Friday. They, they had watched Joseph Aramir take the body hurriedly and prepare it for burial. 
They, they, they had watched him die on Calvary. They had watched the mean soldiers pierce him in the side. They, they had watched blood run from his brow and blood from his hands and blood from his side, blood from his feet. They, 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 had, watched, they had watched soldiers cast lots on his on his garment. They, they had even watched and heard the two male factors, one on the left and one on, on the right. They, they heard the one on the left say, if you be the son of God, if you, if you are who you say you are, you claim to be, then use some of that power and get us off this cross. One on the right said to him, man, hush. This is an innocent man. He hasn't done anything. We, we are receiving just what we deserve. We, we, we have stole jewelry. We, we, we have robbed folk. We, 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 we have smuggled, swindled manipulated folk man we're getting just what we deserve one on the right said listen will you just remember me when you enter into your glory Jesus said unto him this day thou shalt be with me in paradise the women were there they, they watched as the sun refused to shine. They, they watched as the moon dripped in blood. They, they watched as the veil of the temple rent in two. They watched, they stayed there until he died. He died about three o'clock that Friday. They put him in the grave on Friday. That, that was one day. He stayed in there all day Saturday. That's two days. And at the breaking of dawn on the Sunday, first day of the week, he got up. That's three days. They, 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 they came to the tomb because they were not satisfied how Joseph of Arimathea had prepared him for death. They said he did a rush job. We, we, need, to do, we need to do better. We, we, we need to prepare his body properly. But, but, they, but they had to wait till after sundown after the Sabbath. You couldn't work on the Sabbath. And so they waited patiently until after the Sabbath. They, they, they had to gather their spices and come to the tomb. Now maybe they were like the disciples. They had forgot all about what Jesus had told them numerous of times. Told him in Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, that he would, if you destroy the temple, I'll raise it in three days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Told him in Matthew 17, 21, if I, I'll raise it in three days. Told him in John 20, 19, I'll raise it in three days. Isn't it strange how believers forget what he said and enemies don't forget? Let, 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 let. Either they forget or don't believe. But, but let me show you his enemies in chapter 27, 27 and 63. Watch this. Saying, sir, we remember that the deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again. That's his enemies. 
Those are people who didn't follow him. Now watch this. They call him a deceiver. They didn't believe in him. But they remembered the words that he said. And here are the followers of Jesus who did not even remember what he said. They, they, they are going looking for a dead corpse. But let's not be too hard on them. We kind of like hanging around dead stuff. Many have a propensity to have around uh, to hang around dead conversations. Dead gossip. Dead friendships. We, we, we have a tendency to hang around dead language. Dead devotion. Just dead. Dedication. Dead. Devotion. Dead. Giving. Dead. But watch the text. In fact, maybe you would agree with me, these women are headed in the wrong direction. They, 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 they thought they were headed in the right direction. But now let's give them credit because the text says that no men were there. This, this, this was, this was eye-opening because women were not believed a report in public. Back then, w women, women did not have the liberty to give a testimony in public. But Matthew breaks the ceiling for the women because he says when Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Now notice, 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 notice that every writer gives Mary her full name. And then they throw the other Mary in there. The mother of James and Joseph, they, they just throw her in there. Because Mary Magdalene was a prominent woman in that day and time. But the other Mary was not so prominent. So she was just thrown alongside Mary Magdalene. And let's not give too much credit to Mary Magdalene because of her prominence, because God has no respect of a person. And so don't, don't, don't get alarmed when other people's name are called or mentioned more than yours. Don't, don't, don't get so upset when everybody want to hang around her rather than, than you. Don't get upset when everybody wants to talk with her rather than, than you because you are important as well. They come running to the tomb. But notice Mark's gospel, Mark chapter 16, down around verse 3, they were conversating with each other. We're going, but we also notice that they put a stone in front of the tomb. So while we're going to anoint the body of Jesus, who going to roll the stone away? We, we don't have the strength. Who going to roll it away? And maybe you're here today because of some stones that need to be rolled away. 
you don't have the strength to roll the stone away. This stone have you and family separated. This stone have you and the husband sleeping in different rooms. This stone have you and the children at each other's throat. This stone has you with a disability. This stone has you with an illness that the doctors haven't found a cure for. Who gonna roll the stone away? But God had everything under control. In fact, the text says, and I'll rush, I'll, I'll get out here. I know y'all got some cooking to do. I, no, I'll, I'll get out y'all way. The, the text says, verse 2, there was an earthquake. <laughs> that, that was an earthquake. And the text says, the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. And the text says that he sat upon the stone. Now you got to catch this. He descended from heaven and sat up on the stone. How enormous was this angel that he could descend from heaven and sit on a great big stone. But the text says, the text says, and came and rolled back the stone from the door. So not only was he enormous, he was strong. He rolled the stone away. It took several people to roll it up there, only one to roll it back. And that's a word to us. When God gets involved, when God gets involved, it don't take a whole lot. Don't take a whole group. It don't take a multitude. The text says the angel rolled a stone away. The text says, now, now notice, no, notice, no, notice, the, the, the Bible does not contradict itself. That, that's why you have to read it chronologically because the Bible says that Matthew said the angel was outside the tomb. Uh, Mark said there was one angel inside the tomb. Luke said there was two angels and both of them were inside the tomb. John didn't mention angels at all. But he does come back and mention two angels on the inside when Mary Magdalene came back later that day. So, so don't, don't, it, 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 they don't, the Bible does not contradict itself. They all had an eye view of the resurrection. No, notice, notice, I got to throw this in. No, notice the Bible never talks about the resurrection. It doesn't talk about he got up and walked out of there. It, 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 it never gives us details of when he, it doesn't give us any details how he got up and how he walked out. It simply says that he's not here. It mentioned the grave clothes inside the tomb. Head piece at the head and the one at the bottom. It never tells us that Jesus got up and walked out, which really is not important. The most important thing is he got up. That, that, yeah, if, 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 if you don't get that, ain't no need to worry about the details of, of, of when, if he put his left foot down or his right. Ain't no need of going through. The, the, the bottom line is he got up. From, from the grave. No, notice, no, notice, notice. I, I gotta rush. I got, I gotta rush. I gotta rush. I gotta rush. Watch, watch the message. Watch, they, they, and the message here is now watch the angel, because the angel Ruby gives them a, a comfort word. 
he tells them to fear not. The first thing he tells the women is to fear not. They came when it was dark. It was also dangerous because they had guards, Roman guards were outside the tomb. And they had sealed the tomb. But the Bible says when the angel appeared that those soldiers uh, was as dead men as they laid on the ground. The, 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 the radiance of the angel shocked them. It amazed them. Uh, when you really read it in, in the Greek, it says, wow, is this really happening? Because the grave was opened. And they knew they had put that stone there. So he gives them a word of comfort. He tells them, watch the text, to fear not. Verse 5, he says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not. He gives them a word of comfort. Now, I notice, and i got to throw this in. Mary Magdalene, isn't she one that had been cured of demon possession? She had been cured of being possessed by demons. She most wanted to honor him because she runs to the tomb. Now, now notice, whenever he has done something for you, you ought to release reciprocate in some kind of way. You, 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 you ought to, now, now you ought to really want to reciprocate in some kind of way. Well, well what can I do? Well, Paul says, the, the Bible said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. And she comes, she doesn't have much, she just have some spices that she wants to anoint his body with. But notice the word of comfort from the angel. He says, fear not. But now notice what else he says. Not, not only does he give them words of comfort. Watch this now. He, he gives them also a word of cognizance. Because he says, I know that ye seek Jesus. Amongst the dead. But I, I know I know why you're here. I, I know why you got up early. I, 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 know, I know you all think you're headed in the right direction. I, I know, but Jesus is not here for he has risen. He said, I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. I know what you're coming for, but now watch this. Watch, watch this. Verse 6, verse 6 is a word of clarification. Watch the text. He says, he says this, he is not here. He is not here. In fact, there's a, I would say it's double clarification because it said not only is he not here, for he has risen. Now, the brethren were in the office early and, I, and we were mentioning resurrection, so I raised the question, did he rise or was he risen? The Greek language helps us with this because this word risen, ageo in the Greek literally means that he rose. But watch this now. It's in the passive voice. The passive voice means he had to have some help. The, the passive voice means the subject was acted upon. It is God that raised Jesus from the dead. God raised him from the dead. Watch this. That, that was a word of, of clarification. But now wa watch this because th that, there, there is also a word of confirmation. Because the angel says... Come see where the Lord lay. 
If you don't believe me, come see where he used to lay. You all are free to come see where he laid. And we ought to have confidence in this resurrected Christ. Whatever your crisis is, you ought to have enough confidence, clarification from the word and confirmation from the word and comfort from the word to know that he can bring you through whatever you're facing right now. And I might be talking to somebody here that's going, you, 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 underneath the skin, you're going through something. Oh yeah, you look, you got your Easter frocks on. I, you, you got your hair done up. You, 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 got, you got your shoes. You, you got everything matching, but underneath the skin. You just a bubbling volcano about to erupt at any moment. This same Jesus who's risen from the dead. He can give you distinct directions. For a desired destiny. Watch this. The angel. The angel. Uh, the, the, the angel. The, the angel. Uh, uh, give, gives clarification. Because he says come. See the place where. The Lord lay. But, but then. But then watch, watch this. Have you ever noticed. After revelation. Always come responsibility. After the resurrection and after the revelation that he had, gotten, he had been raised from the grave, there came a responsibility for the women. Here's the problem. We like him doing stuff for us. But we are, a, we are missing in action when it comes time for us to be dedicated and committed to him. Have you ever thought what he done? He hung on an old rugged cross. He, he let men disfigure his face. Beat him unrecognizable. He, he let them put spikes in his hands. Spikes in his feet. He let them humiliate him. Because they stripped him of all his garments. And there he was. On the cross. On the cross. For you and for me. And all you ask. Of us. Is to go make disciples. Watch the text. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Watch, watch the text. Verse 7. Verse <laughs> 7. He gives a command because he tells them to go quickly. Don't, 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 don't procrastinate. Go quickly and tell his disciples <laughs> that he is risen from the dead. Now watch this. He just didn't say go. He said go quickly. In, in other words, don't, don't, don't hang around here. Go quickly. And whatever you're going to do for him, you need to do it quickly. For you don't know how much time you have left to serve. Have I got a witness here? The angel tells him to go tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Watch this now. And he says, and behold, he goeth before you. He goeth before you. Oh, no, you don't have to go there and wait on him. He's going before you. And I'm talking to somebody here that the Holy Spirit wants you to know that he goeth before you. Before the trial, before the trouble, before the mishap, before the misunderstanding, before the money went funny. He's gone before you. 
And all he wants you to do is to show up. Watch the text. The, the, the angel said, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Make sure that you go to the right place. Wait a minute. He's specific. Make sure you go to the right place. You see, the, the, uh, uh, God, let me, uh, the enemy is good about sending us to the wrong place. He, he convinces us sometimes this is better if you go over here. He sends us purposely to the wrong place. But this angel doesn't give them a general command. He says with specificity, go to Galilee. If you go to Canaan, if you go to Galilee, he will be there in Galilee. The angel says, there shall ye see him in Galilee. Watch the angel. The angel said, lo, I have told you exactly what I've been sent here to tell you. Now it's up to you what you do with it. It, it, it is entirely up to you. I, I've given you a word of comfort. For I told you that he has risen. I, I, I've given you a word of cognizance because I told you I know why you're here. I, I've given you a word of clarification. I've given you a, a word of confirmation. I, I've given you a, a word of commandment. But now it's up to you what you decide to do with it. If you want to go to your destiny, there are some distinct directions that you have to follow. Have I got a witness here? We, we, we cannot allow ourselves to make us think that we don't need to hear from God. We, we, we don't need to allow ourselves to think that I'm educated. I, I can think on my own. I can make decisions on my own. But uh, I keep hearing uh, John, the 15th chapter, uh, down around the fifth verse, you can do nothing without Jesus. Have I got a witness here? And, and so we need him every day of our lives. We need him to uh, walk with us. We need him to talk with us. We, we need him uh, to guide us along this narrow road. Have I got a witness here? We need him on this journey. Have I got a witness here? For the road is narrow. Have I got a witness? The Bible said the road is narrow that leads to him. In other words, this broad road leads to destruction. And many thereof will find themselves on the broad road. Have I got a witness here? But the narrow road uh, is a road uh, of a, a road that you have to have instructions on. <laughs> have I got a witness here? It's a road that you need him uh, to walk with you. It's a road that you need him uh, to talk with you. It's a road that you need him to guide uh, your hand along the way. Uh, thank God uh, that the women listened 
uh, to uh, the angel. Uh, have I got a witness here? They, they were all uh, messed up on uh, the inside. Uh, they were hurt. Uh, they were humiliated be because of the horror that had taken place uh, on uh, that Friday. And have I got a witness? Uh, but the angel gave them a message. Uh, he said, go tell uh, his disciples uh, to meet him in Galilee. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, and not only did he give them a message, uh, he gave them a word uh, that they uh, ought to hold on to uh, because the Bible said, tell them uh, that he has risen. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, and not only is that a word uh, for the disciples, uh, it's a word uh, for us too. Uh, you need to go tell uh, your neighbors and your co-workers, uh, don't be despair. Uh, don't to allow uh, the troubles of this world uh, to weigh you down. Uh, don't worry uh, how rocky the road is uh, because uh, he has risen. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, if you leave that out, uh, you don't have no message. Uh, you got to tell them uh, that he has risen. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, don't uh, uh, spend your time telling them uh, about the, the, the ten angels, the ten lepers uh, that was in a leper colony. But when you get through telling them about the leper colony. Tell them that he has risen. Have I got a witness? I didn't say it was nothing wrong with telling them that he's able to cast out demons out of a man that lived in the graveyard. But when you get to telling them about the wonder and works of God, tell them that he has risen. Have I got a witness here? I know that you want to tell them about Jairus' daughter. Have I got a witness? that she had a disease, but tell them that he has risen. When you get through telling them about the man that had the demons and the girl that had a disease, go on down and tell them about the dead. He raised Jairus' daughter, but don't forget to tell them that he has risen. Have I got a witness? Tell them, I tell you to tell them that he healed blind Bartimaeus on the road, sitting on the roadside begging, ain't nothing wrong with telling about the story of blind Bonnemels. But don't forget to tell them that he has risen. Have I got a witness? Tell them about Mary and Martha who lost a brother by the name of Lazarus. Have I got a witness that he was his friend? Have I got a witness? But Jesus came to Martha one day and when he came back to her. Uh, he said, don't worry, show me where you laid him. Have I got a witness here? And she said, he's stinking by now. He says, show me where you laid him. I dare you to show him your problems. I dare you to show him your predicament. I dare you to show him your problems. I dare you to show him your enemies. I dare you to show him what your bank account look like. I dare you to show him how rough it's been in your life. Show him where he laid. Have I got a witness? And Martha told him, I know uh, he want to get up uh, one morning at the resurrection. Uh, you know, she had been to Sunday school uh, and she'd taken a few Sunday school classes uh, and she said to him, I know something about the resurrection. I know something about the resurrection. I know he shall get up at the resurrection. Jesus said, what you're talking about, you're talking to. What you're waiting on is already here. What you're looking for, you're looking at. I am the resurrection. Have a got a witness here. He has arisen. Just like he said, tell your neighbors and tell your family members in spite of what we're going through that he has arisen. Have I got a witness? Through the storms of life, he has arisen. Tell your neighbor, I don't care what you're going through, remember that he has risen. Has I got a witness here? Tell your neighbor that he got up on the third day morning with all power, heaven and earth in his hand. He got all power, heaven and earth in his hand. All power is in his hands. He got up. He got up. Didn't he get up? Yeah. 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 He got up. He got up with all power. All power in his hand. He got up. There is no situation that you face.
that the resurrection can't cure. I don't care what you're facing. Just remember. <laughs> what the angel said. He got up. And why seek ye the living amongst the dead? Take your dead struggles. Take, take, take your dead sickness, your dead surroundings. And let Jesus breathe life into it. He can breathe life. situation he says show me where you laid Lazarus just I, 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 just show me and you remember Jesus looks up to his father and said father I know thou always heareth me but for their sake for their sake for their sake he said, Lazarus, come forth. He had to be specific, Vanessa, because if he just said, get up, everybody who had died would have got up. <laughs> That's how powerful he specifically called the name Lazarus. Aren't you glad he know your name? He knows my name. So not only does he know my name, he know my nature. He know my needs. And if he calls your name, whatever's holding you back, whatever's holding you down, has to let you go. Lazarus came forth. He said, loose him, take them grave clothes. Off him. That's that's what he used to be. Are, are there some used to be folk in here that you had to get rid of the <clears throat> the grave clothes? That's what you used to be. That's not indicative of who you are today. That's what I used to do. That's where I used to go. That's who I used to hang out with. But he took the grave clothes off of me. Told him, take the grave clothes off. You know, he left his grave clothes on the slab. They were not becoming of a risen king. So he leaves his grave clothes. And may I just say this? Leave your grave clothes inside the tomb. Leave your grave clothes inside the tomb. Don't let what you used to be dictate what you are today. He's risen. Can, can we just shout that together? He has risen. Let me try one more. He is risen. But let me let me let me try this again. He is risen. Let me try this out. He is risen from the grave. And because he got up, you and I can get up. There is no struggle. There is no problem that's too big for God. Listen, if you don't have a problem or an issue that's bigger than death, hell, and the grave, then bring it to him. He conquered both death, hell, and the grave. And he wants you and I to know today that whatever we're going through is not too much for him to handle. But listen, you got to bring it to him. He's not going to come snatch it. You got, you got to bring it to him. And you got to surrender. You got to surrender your will so he can give you his will. But he's able to bring you 
bring you through. Door of church is open. I'm sorry. Door of church is open. Maybe one kind of baptism Christian experience. Door of church is open. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. Because he lives. All fears are gone. All fears are gone. Because I know. This is, this is personal. It's personal. Who holds the future? The future. My, 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 my. Listen, listen. My, life My life is <laughs> worth living. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just because yes, my God. Savior, he lives. My, 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 my. He lives. Because. Sing it, baby. I can face tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I can. Because he, he lives. My, 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 my. Oh, I don't know about you, but all my fears are gone. My, 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 my. It's because. Listen, listen to this. And life is worth living just because <laughs> my Savior, my Savior, he lives. He lives. Makes my life worth living my, my, my. just because, because <laughs> my Savior lives. My, 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 my. The enemy, the enemy will tell you you don't have nothing to live for. The enemy will tell you to take your life. He'll whisper in your ear and tell you, you ought to ask God to go and take you from here. Look at all the trouble you're, you're having, all the heartache you're having, all the misery you're dealing with, all the mountains of trouble you're dealing with. Lord, just take me, take me home. That's the enemy. But when he whispers those things to you, tell him he lives. And because he lives, life is worth living. With all of my trouble, all of my struggles, all of my heartaches, all of my... Life is worth living. Because he... Because he lives. My, 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 my. My, my, my. Woo. I better let that alone. I'm, I'm, I better let that alone. He lives. I better let that alone. He lives. <laughs> oh, God. Uh. He lives. My, my, my. That's why I know <laughs> I can face the fear. Mm. I, I don't know my. about you, mm. but life is worth living. <laughs> Just Because Do you have a just because? Hey, Jesus lives. My, 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 my. He lives. He lives. He lives. I know my Savior. He lives. 
Life is worth living just because my Savior, he lives. My God, my God, my God. Thank God he, he lives. He lives. He is not a figment of our imagination. He, he lives. One songwriter say he's real. I know he's real. I can feel him deep down in my soul. He's real. I know he's real. And he, one song right said, and he can do what no other power can do. Yeah. Have you any rivers <laughs> that seem uncrossable? Any mountains that seem too hard to climb? Let me tell you about this risen Savior. He specializes and things, things that, that seem seems impossible. to be impossible. impossible. And he can, can do, do. Yes, God. what no other power can, can do. Can do. Yes, God. <laughs> he lives. He, he lives. That's all I can tell you. He lives. I, I want you to tell your problem. He lives. Tell your heartache. He lives. Tell your struggle, he lives. Tell your bank account, he lives. He lives. Come on, brother, let's take our, yeah, our communion. We, we want to... All right, did they change? Oh, okay, you should have your... I'm sorry, I'm, I done gone back, but okay. We did something new today. He did tell me, yes. You, you already have your communion cup. Come on, real. Let me get out of the way. The blood, the juice. Amen. Those who uh, would like to partake of, have there anyone not? been served a cup. If you don't have a cup, please raise your hand. I want to partake of this holy communion. If you don't have a cup, please raise your hand. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, how we do thank you for this Resurrection Sunday, Father. Uh, Father, thank you for the distinct directions for the destiny, Father, that you have delivered through our wonderful pastor, Dr. Bell, Father. Thank you for speaking through us, to us, through him, Father. And Father, now we know because of those distinct directions that your son lives, Father. Father, how we do thank you for raising him from the dead, Father. Because, Father, we know that since he conquered death, hell, and the grave, Father, that there is nothing that in our lives that you can't conquer, Father. So, Father, thank you for that, yes, those yes. directions, Father. Yes, now, Father, as we prepare to partake of this Holy Communion, Father, we, we dare not partake of this uh, with any um, things that are in our hearts that would prevent us from taking this, Father. Now, Father, if there is any or malice or envy or jealousy or anything that would prevent us from receiving this father we ask right now that you that you take it away father father remove it from our body right now father because we want to come to you um, pure in heart father father we pray this prayer in your darling son Jesus name amen amen reading from 1st Corinthians chapter 11 beginning at verse 23. It says, For I have received of the Lord 
that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Amen. Amen, amen. Chairman Norton, I kind of like that. I, I kind of like that. Amen, amen. Uh, we have, um, we're on our way out of here. Um, we thank and praise God for you today. Um, any visitors here today? Visitors, will you, well, not visitors, guests. You are our guests. If you would, if you would stand, I guess. Thank, thank, bless you, bless you, Barbara, bless you, Carolyn. All right. Okay, in the middle aisle. Okay, okay. Glad to have you guys here. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? No, you. you. It's your brother. Your brother. Yeah, Antoine Jackson's father's in the house. Amen. Thank and praise God for him. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Listen, we want to wish uh, each and every one of you a uh, happy resurrection. Uh, now it's time for uh, us to uh, give back to him what he first gave to us. In fact, he's been giving to us uh, ever since we woke up this morning. In fact, he started last night when we laid down. Uh, he kept a roof over our head and kept us in safety. Um, our security was, so he's been given to us ever since we laid down. And he didn't stop there because early this morning, he touched us with a finger of love and we, we got up and let our lives roll on a little while longer. And so now, uh, you, may, you may not have spices to anoint his his dead body, he don't need the anointing now, but he, he wants us to bring ye all the tithes uh, into the storehouse that there might be meat in mine house and prove me now here with. So if you're here today, you need an envelope, raise your hand. They're going to have two, one for the maintenance and one for the ministry. Uh, tithes is for the maintenance and the pink one is for the ministry uh, of the representative of God. Amen. Raise your hands. Are still going up. Hands, hands are here to my left. Hands are here to my left. Hands are here to my left. And thank all of you for using your mobile devices uh, to give, uh, giving electronically. Uh, we thank and praise God for for that uh, technology that we can give uh, what belongs to Him. We don't have to wait. Uh, we can just bring it to Him go online and, and just pay God what a, amen, what we owe him, what we, what we owe him, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits toward me, I will pay my vow, amen, amen, so we're just grateful to God. All right. Glover, let me have a, there's a hand, Glover, let me, Glover, 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 let me have one. Hi, hi. Thank you so much. Let's not forget our 83rd church anniversary is next Sunday. A 83rd church anniversary. Amen. On next Sunday. And some of you, know, nobody knows how much this church has meant to you like you know. Amen. So we want you to celebrate it uh, in that delight, celebrate it in that way, uh, because
adults, you, you probably have uh, more memory of what struggles you went through and the church was there for you. But she uh, celebrating her 83rd church anniversary. Every member uh, is asked to just give just one dollar, just one dollar for every, every year, every year of the um, church anniversary. Amen, amen, amen. The Bible says, will a man rob God? He says, when he robbed, he says, in tithes and in offering. He said, you curse with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there might be meat in mine house. And prove me now, he would say, the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. The aphoristic apostle Paul chimes in and says, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So let every man and woman give according to their purpose in their heart. Let them give, not grudgingly or necessity. Why? Because God loveth a cheerful giver. And listen, when you give to God what is his, God will not sometime, almost, or maybe, God will always take care of you. God, our Father, how we thank you now for this worship experience. Uh, we thank you for those who brought their gifts back to you, God. Use them now for the purpose in which they were given. And God, we thank you and we praise you, we magnify and we glorify your holy and most righteous name. Thank you, God, for raising your son up on that third day morning. Our lives have been changed. Our lives have been revolutionized. Our lives have been rejuvenated. All because he lives. And our fear is gone. So we thank you now for what you did to us on today. And for us on today. Now go with us. Stand by us. Lead and guide us and guard us. And direct us in where you'd have us to go. In Jesus' mighty, marvelous, and magnificent, and majestic, and matchless name we pray. Amen. And thank God. You may stand. Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like, and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done. Thank you for joining in this worship experience on this morning. We pray that you were blessed by the message. Come back and be with us on next week. We pray that God will continue to bless you, guide you, and guard you, and grant you his grace as you continue to serve him in this kingdom. Bless you, and come back and see us.